Well, I'm delighted to welcome you to the We Are series. It's a series of six messages around 30 minutes long. And I want to take you on a journey of who we are and therefore who you are. And this first one is called We Are Apostolic. You are representatives of Jesus Christ. I'm going to come back to that in a moment when I've finished a brief introduction. Uh, the second in the series is we are family. You belong. The third, we are big people. You are significant. The fourth, we are empowered. You have what it takes. The fifth, we are created for encounter. You carry God's presence. And finally, with a kind of a commissioning air to it, we are sent. You make a difference. So welcome, as I've said, to this We Are series. Some of you who know me better than others know that I do like, uh, well, it's usually a whiteboard, but I found it's much better to use this black paper uh, when I'm on video. But I do like charts and diagrams and especially if I can fit it around a quadrant then I really like to use that and of course I've not got everything up there but just a few highlights that I want to share with you you see this first session we are apostolic for me is absolutely vital that every one of us understands this in all honesty I think it's been a little misunderstood. Uh, I've actually come across people who might have gone along to uh, an apostolic kind of gathering and walked out saying that they're an apostle. Now, they might be. But my point is this. The word apostolic and the title apostle aren't the same thing. In fact, here's what I believe. I believe that being apostolic is a mindset and behaviours which are the result of coming under the influence of an apostle. In other words, the apostle's job is to equip you to know, believe and behave in an apostolic way. I'm going to unpack that a little bit more, but that's where I want to start because I want everybody who's watching this to know this absolute truth, which at one level might seem very simple, but I think there's been a lot of misunderstanding around the use of the word apostolic. I, I love, as so many people do, Ephesians uh, chapter 4. I love the whole chapter, actually, not just verse 11. Verse 11 often gets quoted uh, perhaps a little more than others, and I would suggest at times a little out of context. The whole chapter is actually about the unity, the whole body working together. Uh, there are incredible declarations in there. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. There is a, a sense of oneness. And yet at times, uh, I think sometimes the title apostle maybe has at times caused unnecessary division. Here's what I believe. I believe that of those five gifts of Christ to the church, they are to equip us to be representatives, representers of Jesus Christ. And specifically, the first one, apostle. The apostle's job, the pastor's job, the prophet's job, the teacher's job, the evangelist's job is to equip the saints for the work of ministry. That's their job. The evangelist's job in the church isn't to do all the evangelism. The evangelist's job is to equip the saints to be evangelistic. The pastor's job likewise, the teacher's job likewise, the prophet's job likewise. And that applies to the apostle too. The apostle's job is to equip the saints to be apostolic. And once we get hold of this, it actually uh, really releases us I believe, into much more of the fullness of what God has for each one of us in our lives here on the earth. 
You see, you are apostolic. You might say, well, I, I, don't, I don't specifically have somebody that I would call is my apostle. Well, that's actually OK, because Hebrews chapter three and verse one says Jesus is our apostle. Jesus is our apostle. If you do what Jesus did, say what Jesus said, go where Jesus went, believe what Jesus believed, then you are apostolic because Jesus is the apostle. And therefore, when you come under the influence of, of him, you develop a mindset and behaviours of being apostolic. Is everyone with me on this? This is really important. It, it might seem at first glance simple, but I believe that it is absolutely life changing. The apostle is a gift of Christ to the church to equip the saints for the work of ministry. Jesus, he said in John chapter 17, it's recorded verse 18, as the father sent me, so I send you. And the word there sent is actually something like apostolos. I'm not a Greek scholar, but it's that word. In other words, as the father apostled me, so I, as it were, apostle you. I send you out. And actually in that passage, he didn't, uh, he, he didn't hold back. He said, I don't speak on behalf of these alone, looking at his 12 disciples who were also called uh, apostles before Jesus died. He said, I'm not just talking to these, but to everyone who believes on account of their words. You and I, we've been sent. As the Father sent me, said Jesus, so I send you. We're going to come back to that in the sixth in this series. You are sent and you make a difference. We are sent and you make a difference. But for now, I want to look at this incredible truth that you and I are apostolic. Now, please, I don't want you leaving this uh, recording and, and telling everyone you're an apostle. Now, you may be, it's okay. But I do want you to know that you are apostolic. It is a mindset derived from coming under the influence and the teaching of an apostle. And Jesus is the first apostle. He is our apostle and therefore we are apostolic. And Jesus said, as the father sent me, so I send apostolos you. And this is absolutely vital. Now, here's what I also believe. I believe that the church should be an apostolic family. You see, I think at times what we've done is we've associated the word with apostle, with kind of structure, with networks, with large amounts of church planting, with leaders with great influence. And all of those are wonderful and valid. I have no problem with them. But actually, I believe that every church is meant to be an apostolic family. Again, we're going to come back to family. We are family you belong. We're going to look at in one of the future episodes in this series. But for now, I want us just to focus on this uh, truth that I believe that we are meant to be an apostolic family. Where do I get that from? Well, we, we are sent ones. And I believe that what we are meant to do as the church is to be in relationship with one another and be trained and equipped to transform our world. Whilst a part of being a church is gathering, is being together, is, is celebrating, and certainly this season in which I'm recording this, we have become so aware of our need for and our love for gathering and being together. There is no question in my mind that that, that is a huge part of the church being family, but it was never meant to stop there. We weren't meant just to gather. We weren't meant just to create this, this safe environment, this oasis, this place of being separate from the rest of the world. No, we, we're an apostolic family. We, we have been sent from heaven to earth and through family, through relationship, through creating community to be trained and equipped 
to bring transformation to our world, to our spheres of influence as individuals and as a whole body. That's why for me, the description of the church as being an apostolic family, I believe is the right one. And it is built, remember, Jesus said this, I'll build my church. Jesus, the apostle, will build his church. Now, he, he also gives gifts to the church, but Jesus said he'd build his church. And I believe that we are to be an apostolic family. In other words, a place where people encounter God through prayer, through worship, through prophecy, through healing, through signs and wonders, through experiencing his presence together. A place where we encounter God together. And then we become part of a family, part of a community. Ephesians actually says, from whom every family on earth derives its name, talking about our Heavenly Father. We are family. The nature of the Bible is in many respects a relational textbook. It's about relationships. The death of Jesus Christ on the cross, of course, restores our broken relationship with the Father to being sons and daughters of his family is what we're about the illustrations of the bible are full of pictures of family paul said i'm not talking about husbands and wives but but of christ and the church that beautiful picture again of us being family so we're we're a place where people encounter god i hope you've encountered god today perhaps in worship through someone else praying for you we 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 encounter him. And again, we're going to look at that in another one of these sessions that we were created for encounter. So church, a place where we encounter God, a place where we become a part of a family and a place where we're trained and equipped. The whole purpose of Ephesians chapter four and verse 11, the picture of the fivefold is to equip the saints for the work of ministry, not the work of church, but the work of ministry of expanding the influence of the king. You and I, we are a part of an apostolic family. Whether we have an apostle leading our family in, in the natural is, is not the key point. The most important thing is that we know that we are apostolic because the Father sent Jesus and Jesus sends us. So we, we as it were, experience encounter, experience heaven together live in relationship, family with each other, and we are trained and equipped to bring change, transformation to our world, to increase his kingdom, if I can put it that way. We are an apostolic family. We are apostolic. Jesus is our apostle, and we have an apostolic mandate. We were taught to pray, weren't we? We were taught to pray on earth as it is in heaven, and not just to pray but to actively participate in the assignment of pulling heaven to earth. I love that so much of our, of our modern church life has uh, in recent years been focused on, on the supernatural, on bringing heaven to earth uh, and, and of praying and standing in front of impossible uh, situations, which is really bringing heaven to earth. There's so much to this. So much to this incredible mandate that we have been given or assignment to to bring heaven to earth. And we can't do it, of course, on our own. It is a supernatural assignment. It covers such an incredible and beautiful range. I, I love the, the principle that if it isn't in heaven, it shouldn't be on earth. In other words, if there's no sickness in heaven, that sickness shouldn't be here on earth. But I, but I also love to think of the things that are in heaven that should be here on earth. Many of you know my passion for government, administration, for organisation. And so when I think of heaven on earth, I, I think of heaven's government on earth. I, I think of doing things heaven's way, of structuring things heaven's way and with heaven's purpose. I, I tend to think in that way. I think of wanting the strategies of heaven on earth. Let me tell you four, four great strategies, perhaps the four greatest strategies of the Bible. For God so loved the world, 
What a strategy that is, that he sent his only begotten son, sent, apostled, his only begotten son, that whoever believed in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. What a strategy that is to pull down to heaven. Uh, What about the great strategy that was announced by the angels at the birth of Jesus Christ? Peace on earth, goodwill to all men. What an incredible strategy that is. Peace and goodwill. Amazing, isn't it? Did you notice that both of those are whole earth, whole world strategies? Oh, what about where the psalmist said that the whole earth may know thy ways? And he was referring there specifically in the context to the goodness of God, that the whole earth might know of the goodness of God. Or one of my absolute favourites, Habakkuk 2.14, that the whole earth will be filled with the knowledge of of the glory of God as the waters cover the sea. Another whole earth strategy, filling the earth with the knowledge of the glory of God. And here's the incredible thing. We're apostolic. So so we have a part to play in all four of those strategies. We have a part to play in the whole earth being saved. We have a part to play in peace on the earth and goodwill to all men. We have a part to play in letting the whole earth know his ways and his goodness. And we have a part to play in filling the earth with the knowledge of the glory of God. Oh, yes, it's already filled with his glory. But Habakkuk said it would be filled with the knowledge of the glory of God. People will know what his glory is and what his glory looks like. What an incredible assignment, a mandate that we step into you see you and i are apostolic we're representatives of jesus christ i remember the first time i I stood in a pulpit and and said something and i remember saying it with that sort of that slight edge of fear and trepidation and my mind wondering if it was okay if it was legal because jesus said this he said if you've seen me You've seen the Father. Now, I love that. It's uh, it's just a beautiful description. Different ones have have kind of used that phrase in different ways. If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Jesus' assignment was to reveal the Father. But here's the incredible thing. You and I, you and I, we are sons and daughters. We're sons and daughters of the King of Kings. Do you know... There is a sense in which what Jesus said of himself, if you see me, you've seen the Father, is our assignment. A part of our assignment as sons and daughters is to reveal the Father. You see, we represent Jesus. We are representing him on earth as sons and daughters. And Jesus, as a son, revealed the Father, which means that we get to reveal the Father. We are representing Jesus and we are pointing to the father isn't that incredible but it's a bit scary but it's one of the reasons why we are able to jump on to the beautiful verse in Ephesians 1 5 he predestined us to adoption as sons through Jesus Christ himself according to the kind intention of his will we've experienced adoption you see you I want to tell you something here. You cannot have an apostolic move of God, which is what we are a part of. We are a part of an apostolic move of God. That's why I'm teaching this, because we need to know that we're apostolic. Apostolic's not not just for the church leaders. It's not just about having a title. It's about all of us being apostolic. It's all of us taking our place in an apostolic move of God, of bringing heaven to earth, of revealing the Father, of being an apostolic family and of knowing that Jesus is our apostle. I want to tell you something. You cannot have a sustained apostolic move of God without what I would call an inner healing move of God or a sonship father heart move of God. Because if we leave that behind, we will revert to an old method of doing things. We'll end, we, we just will lose all of the benefits. 
We'll, we'll lose all of the awareness that we are sons and daughters of the King of Kings, that we have been given a mandate to bring heaven to earth, that Jesus is our apostle and that we are an apostolic family. We've been sent from heaven to earth to create family and from that family to expand the influence of the King of Kings and Lord of Lords and inner healing and sonship and daughtership and knowing the father heart of God are absolutely vital to this. You see, we will fail to reveal the father. We will fail to be the light that Jesus said we are. You know, incredible truth. Jesus said this. He said, while I'm with you, I'm the light of the world. But then he said that we are the light of the world. We see, we, we represent the light. He is light and life and we represent that. It's this extraordinary, scary, beautiful, wonderful, amazing assignment that we can't do on our own without God. But God chose to co-labor with us. Isn't that incredible? We are apostolic. You represent Jesus. And another verse that I, I love, which I, I want to use just to begin to sum up, it is is the verse in uh, in Second Corinthians and um, and chapter um, five and verse twenty. We are ambassadors. We are ambassadors. Oh, my page is stuck. Come apart, page. We are ambassadors of the anointed one who carry the message of Christ to the world. Listen to this. As though God was tenderly pleading with them directly through our lips. We are ambassadors. You all know what an ambassador is. An ambassador is a representative of another country. This is a, a most extraordinary picture for every one of us. See, in, in the cities of the world, there are embassies and those embassies actually represent foreign soil. And, and the ambassador is, is living on foreign soil. The American embassy in London is, is foreign soil. That's where you get some of the, the diplomatic immunity and those things from. I won't go into that right now. But this is very, very important. Because what this means is that we are ambassadors. It means that we are actually creating foreign soil. In other words, heaven soil everywhere we go. That's why that picture in the, in the scripture of, of, of a strong tower and people run into it. In a sense, our assignment is to be ambassadors, to, to be able to live, as it were, in the embassy to, to, to create this place where people can run in to heaven's soil, can experience heaven with us. Somebody a little while ago, just in a, in a moment of, of difficulty, crisis, sadness, a challenge in their life, picked up the phone to me and, and, and their wife had actually already done it to Sue. And we love that because what happened was that, that we got to be ambassadors of Jesus Christ to somebody in a crisis. You see, that's that's the picture. You you run into an embassy, don't you? What do you do when you run into an embassy? You find a sanctuary, which is actually a description, uh, very often which is used to describe a room in the church. But do you not know that you are a temple of the Holy Spirit? You you actually provide sanctuary because you are an ambassador, an ambassador of heaven on earth. You see, we're apostolic. We've been sent to make this place, this earth, like heaven. To, as it were, live in a constant kind of state of being in an embassy, to be ambassadors so that people can run in to our sphere of influence and find sanctuary. You're apostolic. Jesus said, as the Father sent me, so I send you. It's in that beautiful picture. And you represent him. You're representing Jesus. And you, you kind of live in another place, in another land. And, and a part of that means that, that you're bringing heaven with you. 
Peter said this, he said, we have become partakers of the divine nature. That means that when people meet our lives, they meet representatives who are representing the divine nature. Some have, you know, maybe laughed at it or mocked it or and perhaps it's really gone out of fashion. But those years ago when people were wearing those WWJD bracelets, it, it wasn't so crazy really, was it? What would Jesus do? What, what's meant to happen is people are meant to run into our lives and find out what would Jesus do because we know that we are apostolic. We know that we are the sent ones. We know that we are representatives. We know that we are ambassadors. We know that we are to be the light of the world representing Jesus. And rather than be afraid, rather than shrink back from this assignment, it is scary. We, we need to step into it. Yes, with all humility, but we need to step into this our identity as being apostolic our assignment of being sent from heaven to earth to be ambassadors to be representatives and to be members of and everywhere we go to create an apostolic family where people encounter God perhaps through us become a part of a family and are trained and equipped to change their world to bring heaven to earth to bring transformation reformation creativity to this beautiful earth that we're a part of we are apostolic we've been sent sent from heaven to earth and remember actually Ephesians says we're seated in heavenly places we're kind of sitting there with our feet down here on earth kind of pulling it down all the time We've been sent from heaven to earth. Yes, we need apostles in the church, but the apostles job is to equip us, all of us, so that we know that we are apostolic. And to be a part of an apostolic family where people encounter God, become a part of a family and are trained and equipped to bring change and transformation to their sphere of influence. To know that our assignment is that, to bring heaven to earth. And I want to encourage you. Yes, there are wonderful men and women who are apostles. I know some of them. But if you're struggling to find your apostle today, I want to encourage you. Your apostle is Jesus. Hebrews 3, 1. And if you do what he did, say what he says, go where he goes, believe what he believed, saw as Jesus saw. You are apostolic. It's a mindset and behaviours that are the result of coming under the influence of an apostle. And it means that you represent him. You represent how he revealed the father. You represent how he treated people around him. You represent him everywhere you go. And you're an ambassador. And people should be able to run into your life and find sanctuary as you show them the divine nature in your words and your actions, your behaviour and your attitude. We are apostolic. You represent Jesus. Let me pray for you. Father, I pray today that everyone watching this will know this, what in many respects is simple truth, that they are apostolic. What an incredible privilege that we have been sent by Jesus. And Father, I just pray. I pray that everyone will, will embrace this truth and that it will change the way they live, knowing that they represent Jesus. And we all know that we cannot do it without you. But you didn't leave us on our own. You didn't leave us as orphans. You left us your precious Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit, of course, is the spirit of adoption. Adopting us as sons and daughters. 
making us family, equipping us with power to do the works of Jesus, to represent him. So, Father, would you give us today even a fresh infilling of your Holy Spirit? Would you embrace us with the spirit of adoption? Would you fill us with boldness and with courage to go out into this world knowing that we are the sent ones, sent from heaven to earth to represent Jesus? Today we embrace this truth, that we are apostolic. We have a mandate to bring heaven to earth. We are an apostolic family and Jesus is our first apostle. I bless you in the name of Jesus. Amen.